Heirs may his statement, heirs kingly hoherter, excellence, shara priestere, mina dama hera, farabarn, farabarnbarn. Now, I will translate the last four words of those for you whose native language is English or Swedish. <laughs> That's for our dear children and our grandchildren. The 2000 citation to 18 citation for economic sciences highlights the causes and consequences of technological innovation and climate change. The science of climate change was founded in 1896, the very year that Alfred Nobel died and established these prizes. Since that time, the full implications of climate change and its impacts have been illuminated by the intensive research of scientists in different fields, from agronomy and atmospheric sciences all the way to zoology. And these studies depict an increasingly dire picture of our future under uncontrolled climate change. The signal contribution of economics is to recognize that climate change is a harmful, unintended side effect of economic growth known in the technical language of economics as an external effect or an externality. Economic theory suggests that the best remedy for such externalities is a pollution charge, a charge on carbon emissions, or what is now called a carbon tax. A carbon tax raises the price of carbon emissions to reflect the social costs. It also provides powerful incentives to reduce emissions, and as my fellow laureate Paul Romer has shown in his studies, to develop new low-carbon technologies. So after more than a century of research in different fields, the science is clear, the economics is clear, and it is now up to those who represent us our elected leaders to act responsibly to implement durable and effective solutions. We should not underestimate the obstacles. Some are real, such as the need to develop new technologies or to forge international agreements and institutions that will promote cooperation. Some obstacles are unnecessary and man-made such as those posed by the financial interests of polluters or the ludicrous arguments of some of our politicians. But I end this toast with words for students, for young people, and for our grandchildren. <laughs> you are likely to live through to the end of this century. The globe at century's end will be vastly different from today. And the condition of our world will depend on the steps that we, in this generation, take now to slow global warming. I hope that you, our children and grandchildren, will look back in the years ahead with appreciation. I hope that you can say, that we, in this generation, had the resolve to take the steps to overcome the obstacles, real and unnecessary, to take the steps necessary to preserve our unique and beautiful planet. So, talk and thank you. <laughs>